Well, cheers and welcome to Wine and Weeds, a possibly semi-regular video series with me and Laura from How's It Growing and perhaps some special guest stars, depending on how this all goes. It's very casual. The idea is that we're gonna share with you what we're drinking and then we're gonna feature, each feature a special weed. So let's start with what we're drinking, which will not always be wine, by the way. So let's start with what I'm drinking. And I thought that today I would pair a very ordinary wine with a very ordinary weed. So it's interesting, a couple years ago, I actually switched to drinking almost exclusively white wine in summer. And the rest of the year, I almost only drink red wine, but in summer, I just like crisp. But the only kind of white wine I really like is Sauvignon Blanc. And the only Sauvignon Blancs I really like um, are Sauvignon Blancs from New Zealand's Marlboro Valley. I'll try other ones, but it's really my favorite. So my favorite sort of everyday-ish Sauvignon Blanc is Whitehaven. And that is from the Marlboro Valley. And I like it. It's very, um, we're not going to get heavy into this stuff, but I like it because it's citrusy and crisp. Um, however, I have found this one right here. This is Kirkland, which is, you know, that's the Costco brand. This is called, uh, this is also from the Mar Marlboro Valley. It's just Kirkland's Sauvignon Blanc. Um, the reason I like this is because it's very, very, very similar to Whitehaven. I actually kind of think it might be the same thing with a different label. It is about 40% less. So this allows, this is sort of my literally weekday, everyday wine. And yes, I have an ice cube in it because it's summer and cold is good. All right, now let's get to a weed that is kind of wrapping up its season in my garden, but it's very Van Ordinaire weed, but it irritates me. And I actually learned something about it that probably explains why I have so much of it in my garden. Let's go. Okay, so this is chickweed, Stellaria media. This stuff is all over my garden. Um, so on my scale of bad weeds, let's say it's a one to five scale, this is probably only a two, because frankly it falls more in the annoyance category than it falls in the truly evil category, and we've got some of those too. But let me tell you about this. So it just gets, it kind of is a ground rambler, it has these small, it has these small little round leaves. You can see there's a flower bud starting right here. It gets tiny little white flowers. As soon as you get those white flowers, you're going to start getting seeds and it's going to seed itself everywhere. For me, it happens right on the edges of beds, which that's where I dug this out from. Um, and it's definitely like sort of cooler moisture conditions. So that's why I say we're coming to the end of its season now but it will keep growing all season long um, because it just keeps reproducing. Now, what I learned about this when I was actually doing a little bit of research on this was actually that it roots very easily. So it's an annual, basically a lot of people say it can be a cool winter perennial. I don't know, I've always known it to be an annual. However, um, it does root very well from cutting. So I've actually just been hoeing this. Well, if you don't pick up what you hoe out of the ground, you just are making more plants. And often I just hoe weeds and leave them. So that might be why I have a lot of it. Now, another thing about this is that apparently it is edible. There are a lot of edible weeds out there. And I'm gonna be honest here. I am not a forager, so I don't like to give a lot of advice about things you should be eating, and I don't generally eat weeds. I have a lot of weeds that are edible, I just don't eat them. By the time I look at them as a weed, I don't look at them as food anymore. However, in the interest of wine and weeds, I'm going to try this for the first time. Um, it's super mild. 
I would say, so one of the descriptions I read of it said that it's kind of like sprouts. I would say there just isn't a lot of flavor here. They're not bad. It's a little tough. Like you gotta chew at it a little bit. But it's not terrible tasting. It also doesn't taste like much. So I don't feel a need to dig it up and eat it. Anyway, chickweed is my weed for this weed and wine. Uh, fortunately, it's not that difficult to dig up and since it doesn't get tall, it doesn't tend to crowd out plants. So there is that. It's more of just sort of a nuisance, but a big nuisance because I have a lot of it. All right, now we're gonna check out what Laura is drinking and what Laura is weeding this week. Cheers, Erin. Cheers, gardeners. So, what a great idea. Thanks for putting this together, Erin. Nobody wants to weed. It's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. And who's the somebody? The gardeners. So here we are, and I'm about to show you a real nuisance in my garden. You'll see I just poured a glass of my favorite Cabernet. I love barefoot Cabernet. I lean towards red wines. And there are three that are my favorite. I love the Barefoot, I love Menage a Trois, and I love uh, Little Penguin. So those three I kind of rotate as my go-to. I'm not the biggest white wine drinker, but after having seen what Erin had, I wanna try that. So maybe in the next video, you'll see me trying what she had because it looks so cool and refreshing for a hot summer weed pulling day. So wait till you guys see my get up. I am in full gear here. I think I should have asked Erin if I could borrow her, uh, her makeshift hazmat suit for when she did her boxwood blight video. So I'll show you what I'm wearing. I'll show you what we're pulling and I'm going to take you over to where the problem area is. Okay, you guys, this is uncharted territory. This is back behind my garage slash shed. I would like to call this area snake town. Me and snakes, we don't get along, not so much. So that's why I've got the get up. In addition to the fact that when I pull weeds, I get like this prickly rash, like this raised red bumps. It's not pretty and it's annoying and it goes away after a short period of time. But anytime I pull this particular weed, I've got the sleeves, I've got the pants and the boots because again, snake town and I know my friend Erin doesn't want to be in Snake Town with me, so we share that. And back here, I have seen we have black racers in our garden and rat snakes, and there are big black snakes that can get to be about six feet long. So uh, I don't want to have any encounters. I've got the boots, I've got the long sleeves to protect me, the hat from the sun. Could I be wearing any more clothes right now? Look at me, I'm Chandler. Could I be wearing any more clothes? Oh, I feel like I should maybe do some lunges <laughs> and put on a couple extra pairs of pants. Anyway, in today's video, I am going to be pulling thistle weed. I've got some imposter weeds over here that would like to pretend to be a thistle, but they're not. Those are very easy to pull, but it's non-native. It's a nuisance. It has massive tap roots. I'm gonna show you the tool that I'm gonna to use to pull it. They'll continue to grow and bolt will turn to seed, they get these fluffy white seed heads, and then the seed heads blow in the wind, and yes, grow more of these horrible, horrible weeds. And I can control what's on this side, but I can't control what's everywhere else. So I do think that there's a bunch from, from the other side of the fence, and there's only so much you can do. I don't love weed fabric, so I don't put that down. I'm never back here because, again, snake town. Uh, I don't want to be back here. I don't hang out back here. There's nothing for me back here. Maybe eventually I'll put a ground cover down. I was thinking about putting some ajuga back here or just something to kind of suppress the weeds and still look kind of okay. But um, yeah, I'm never back here. I don't want to walk through a thicket of weeds and I don't want to perpetuate that weed cycle, letting them self seed, letting the weeds blow all over and creating more of a nuisance for myself and for my neighbors. So I'm back here doing the weed thing. Let me show you what I got. But first, 
So let me actually brought my gloves with me. You know, we all start the season with a matching pair and then as the season progresses, you're left with uh, two non-matchers. They're somewhere where the dryer socks go, I guess. Yeah, so I've got the pink and blue gender reveal gloves on right now. <laughs> I guess, whatever. Um, so the thistleweed, extremely prickly. They're painful. Put gloves on. They're not good. Uh, anyway, the imposter weed pulls out super easy. It doesn't have the deep tap root like the thistle weed does. So I will show you. We did just have some rain and you can see how shallow the, the roots are here, but it looks like thistle, but it's not as thickly leaved. It's not as prickly. So these I just hand pull. And if you hand pull your weeds right after a rain, oh, it's so much easier. You can just get right in there and pull them out. So I'll make a pile. I'll pull those out. They come out really easily. Here's another one, just like that. Pull your weeds before they seed and you'll have way less of a problem to battle through the season. If you let them set seed, they're just going to keep seeding. So for the thistle weed, they have deep tap roots. And if you go and you try and pull, even if you grab the base of the weed and pull up, it's most likely going to break. If it breaks and you leave that tap root in there, it's just going to grow another weed right up from that tap root. So I have this tool here to try. Hose Link actually sent me this and it has blades here that grab deep down into the and pull the tap root out. So this is actually the first time I'm using this tool. So let's see how it goes. I wanna show you. I'm gonna show you without a weed how this tool works. So you'll push the blades down onto the ground like so. Okay, then you lean it back like this. Then it grabs your weed, then you push this, and it throws your weed. Oh, I'm liking this. Okay, we can get into this. So let's try it on one of these thistle jerks here. So I'm gonna put it, I apologize that you're seeing just the lower part of me right now, but I'm gonna put this right over the weed, put the blades right over the stem, right where the root is. Then I'm gonna step down then I'm gonna pull back. I'm gonna put my foot on the little paddle here and kind of pull this tool towards me. And there you have it. Then you just slide like this and it'll toss your weed. I love things that make life easier, so I'll go along and I'll pull these ones that I know are not the thistles just to see what I'm doing. And then once I come along, to these prickly guys or some that are giving me some resistance uh, or have a tap root. I'm gonna do another one right here, right over top of the weed, step down, hold it in place, got it. Fantastic, I especially love this. Just toss it. I, I should have brought my debris bag over here, but I was a little bit too excited to show you my new tool and how I'm gonna get rid of some of these weeds in my little snake town area that I don't wanna be in. All right, you guys, thank you for watching the very first Wine and Weeds. If you like this, let us know so Laura and I know where to take this. I think our plan is that we're going to alternate whose channel this appears on. So we're aiming for once a week at this point. We are not guaranteeing it. We are aiming for it. So it'll be on my channel this week, Laura's channel next week. We'll try to alternate. Look for uh, guest star weeders and guest star drinkers. All right. I hope you enjoyed it. Let us know what weed is getting to you in your garden today. Maybe we'll feature it. Maybe we'll have guest star weeds even. Who knows? We'll see where this goes. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day.